Hello and welcome to Anton's TV. Hello. My name is Jack Duxbury, he's Tay Tay, yeah. and this is... I'm Dom Shaw, hello. Dom, and I'm so excited to have Dom here. Just to let you know, there's going to be multiple videos with Dom. There's one where it's just going to be audio only of him playing these great boxes from Behringer. There's going to be one explaining these two, and we're going to be... We've already done that one. And in this video, I've got something that you've never seen. I don't know what it is. Only the boss has given it to me in a bag and we've had to keep it very secret. This is very exciting. And as an aficionado, I'm interested to see what you make of this because I've been told this might be the type of thing that gets you okay. slightly aroused. Okay, let's have a look. Thank you, my glamorous <laughs> assistant. Taylor, your yeah. glamorous boss. Yeah. Right, well, up to you, mate. Open it, it's a Come present. Come on then, thank you. Let's have a look. Okay, I'd recognise that. <gasps> oh, wow. Modded out. So this, this, is, this is the devil fish mods, isn't it? Or is it? I it is. don't know. You, yes. I know nothing. I know yeah, nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is the devil fish. So mods, it's called it? the TD3 MOSR. Modded out synthesizer. What does the R stand for? It looks like a 303, and it's got With a, a smiley lot face on it. More st an angry smiley face. Oh, yeah. it's got a smiley face sticker. Behringer are rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pushing the boat out, as we said. <laughs> yeah. So, this looks like a devilfish. Rip but it, it open, looks like it Rip looks it. like a lot more. Okay, I'm seeing more ins and outs already. Yeah. Now, what's the devilfish? What? So the devilfish was an Australian mod that was is notorious. Um, the people would send their three i threes off to a garage in Australia. <laughs> you just have to package it off and send it, and and cross your fingers that your you know two thousand pound synthesizer doesn't go missing in the post. How much are the devilfish mods? Um, they're a lot. It's a lot. I can't remember. To, but they, it's a lot to get it done and he used to charge, I believe he charged a lot for the components and a lot for the work because it's one man in, in his And Australia, basement. yeah. And Australia, a long way away. Um, so you're telling me that Behringer have mimicked all the, what do you expect, what, what can you see on here already that gets you going? Well, there's all of this. These different inputs, these, like the gate sliding, you've got all sorts of different CV inputs. Um, there's also a lot more... Yeah, there's, there's a red button, there, there's there, a couple red buttons which excites a, there's me. There's a sub oscillator button, so that, that indicates that there's another oscillator. What we're going to um, do is, we're going to leave Dom to plumb this in and we're going to film his reaction, chain this all up and we'll see what music comes out of it. it. Then we're going to talk about what you felt after about 10-15 minutes rocking with the thing, yeah? Yes. Let's okay. do I'm it! I'm up for it, I'm up for it, I'm up for it. Nice. So, shall I go? Uh, no, I'm going to just say we've been to Subway a bit. some sauce on your cap. Have I? Yeah. God, amazing. What, yeah. what an achievement. Yeah. Okay, Taylor, we've just had our Subway. Dom, how long have you had with this? About half an hour. 20 minutes, half an hour. And before we, I quiz you about your initial reactions of it, did, have you got something we can have a quick blast of it? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's so we'll have a little blast now. and when we're going to... I'm doing more, more bassy noises off it at the moment, but I will make it squeal as well. Um, oh, and yeah. I'm going to let this one accompany it with some background wobbling. So, yeah. I'm done! Here we go. I love it. 
that one in the background. Right, I'm hearing already, check out this other video where uh, Dom's shown us through the TD3 and the RD6. Um, I just heard a, a lot more of uh, that aggression, that sound. What's, so you've had 30 minutes. Again, forgive Dom. He is going to do other videos where I'm sure he'll get all of it out of there. But I love this idea of this is what it's going to be like for you. 30 minutes in, if you know as much about 303s, what's your opinion as a 303 aficionado of this so far in half an hour? Oh, it's, it's brilliant. It's what, it's what we've all been waiting for for the last 20 years. Or both, both of these machines. What these is machines. that? As a guy that doesn't know, and maybe you like that sound, what yeah, so far real. has struck you? Um, it's, it's real. It's the real sound. It's not some cheap emulation or imitation. It, it's exactly the sound that is required if you need if you want to make that sort of music so your acid music dance music your rave music house music um these are the machines these are the machines that it was made on these are the sounds that that um create the genres you know you need certain sounds in order to make a certain type of music and it was it was these rolling noises that created those types of music it really was and in this setup here how did you you had the TD3 and the RD6, which you saw in the other video. Yes. What did you, when you get this out of the box, what was your instinct? Is this doing the lead or the bass or what? Um, well, I had it doing the, the bass, but then it, to that bass line turned into a lead and I had another bass wobbling underneath that probably wasn't very audible until the end, but they all provide movement and, and you know, stuff going on. Um, personally, I'm more inclined to use this for bass lines because you've got so much more sort of scope with the, with the sound sculpturing um, on, on the modded out analog baseline synthesizer as opposed to the TD3. The TD3 is wonderful for, for old house baselines and acid top lines, whereas I think the TD3 is a far more... Um, oh, let me think of the word. It's got far many. It's, it's got far more applications. You can use it for more types of music. I think it's it's a more versatile synthesizer. And in definitely. And in this limited time you've had with it, what are the things that come to? I mean, to me, looking at it, there seems a crap load more buttons. There's loads of stuff. Yeah. Now all all of the the equivalent controls on these, the cut off, the resonance, the tune, the envelope, the decay, they seem to be a lot more sensitive. So I think it's the, if you're, you start off on the center points, I think, and that's how you, that would be. Oh, down. Down. Yeah, that, that would be everything closed off. So I think everything closed off in a normal way, your normal starting point on the 303 is here. And so there's an awful lot more scope of movement and, and, and sound sculpture that's afforded us on this thing. Mm -hmm. and there's a, a million options with, with the routing, you know, we can start. Um, plugging, plugging those. Functionally, in terms of programming, because Tom, just in that half an hour, I went to get the sandwiches. I love a low price sandwich. I love Subway. You've put in that pattern. Yeah. Functionally, that's all the same, right? It's exactly the same as the 303. It's just the the controls. How you can shape the sounds. Manipulating the sounds. Yeah, yeah. The the the, uh, the envelopes. There seems to be filter frequency mod modulation. There's slide times that's adjustable. They've got slow, lots of different switches he's put in here. We've got an accent and a muffler, which I'm not sure what the accent. I think that makes the accent because we've got control accents here, so we can we can control the decay of the accent and how sort of. Um, the attack, so whether it's hard or soft. And w were these on, again, please excuse my ignorance, or don't excuse it, let me know in the comment section, <laughs> it's cool. We, uh, so he would put these controls into a normal 303, would he? With yeah. With added so, pots? Yeah, so you would you'd get an old 303 and send it off to, to this, this little boutique place out in Australia and it would come back with all these different mods. Yeah. And now would it be worth would it be worth more with the devil, devil fish yeah. mods? So yeah. like to just have it done, it doesn't devalue it in any way. No, it makes it worth more. Um, but but again, like the prices... You, you'd are, need two 303s the if you I've want The prices I've heard of that stuff. And the, oh, thousands and thousands. And we're talking, check the link out on this. Now, what one thing 
is uh, Dom, as a, again an aficionado to a beginner out there liking this genre, why uh, would you? What would you buy? Honestly, first out the gate, would you buy this one first and then this, or would you buy both, or would you buy? If you had to have one, would you buy the one with more? What's your gut? If you're going for traditional acid music, I'd go for the original one first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quickly followed by one of these. Right, yeah. Because th this, gives you a, this, this gives you all the classic, uh, sort of unmessed with sounds, which, which you're going to want to make that sort of music. This gives you far more creative sounding lead lines, much more interesting bass lines than you could ever get off this. And it, it creates the same sounds as this. But I, it's harder to get the original normal noise of a 303 out of a Devilfish one just because of all of the extra parameters. You've got to keep and an eye on go. so much changing. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, so can, can we hear personally, two, two so I, I'd go out and buy them both at the same time. Yeah, I mean, it, you know? and that would be, we're thinking, under... Three hundred pounds. Yeah. Uh, Bargain. Uh, when we fit, check out the prices. It might even be less than that. Yeah. Uh, just so they can hear. Is there any way we can hear maybe the scope of that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we, and, and one thing I found interesting just to look at is we. You were talking about in our other video how the distortion on this doesn't really get you going. Doesn't really cut the mustard. Now on this, it seems to be. It's implemented huge. It's, differently. Yeah, it's, uh, it's how's a, your feeling? How's that been for you? I prefer the overdrive on this. It, it, to be honest, it's it's a so aggressive. Animal. It's so aggressive. It's going to take some getting used to. And what's the muffler? Is that a like a fixed know. frequency? I don't know. I'm not sure what that Let's is. Let's have a play it, with it that. It does then. have an effect. It does have an effect on the sound. There's a master volume right. that cuts it out, but if you take out the master volume on the overdrive, you get nothing. So mm. I think it all goes through. The idea of the Devilfish was was some interesting distortion modulations and, and modulations for the 303. So. You see, there's all these modulation changes that are linked with I think in the same way that the old, uh, so I'm, I shouldn't talk at the same time, I think in the same way that the old um, Universal Audio compressors have a lot of actions linked to one pot, there's a lot, there's a lot of, one, yeah. of stuff going on Yeah, the input here. is the threshold. Yeah, and yeah, all, yeah, yeah. Okay. and there's, all, there's all sorts of um, envelope modulating stuff that carries on behind the scenes. With, when you're, there's a lot going on when you're playing with this machine that doesn't go on with this one. Um, that opens up and all, so all sorts of possibilities for sound. But then also, there's a lot more messy sounds. You know, there's, a, there's, there's this sub-oscillator thing which sounds amazing, but then when you're, say if you're in a live, in a live situation, or if you're recording, you're going to have to understand what you're doing with this and what it's going to do to your sound oh, system. that's interesting. So that's a whole... Is that tunable, or do you just turn no, it on it and just that, turns on and that it, mirrors? It, yeah, and it mirrors what's been done. What do you think of it? I think it's great can be messy. As, as a synthesizer, and as, as a function on the synthesizer and, and just for making pure noise coming out of my speakers, it's wonderful. Whether I'd find it useful in the studio, I don't know, because you know, sub-oscillation, that's going to take up an awful lot of headroom, your mm. sub, which, which you won't be able to hear, really. So live, yeah, really good. I don't know whether I'd use that particular thing in the studio. I, I've, of course, I think there probably is moments where you would want to use it but really i need to get this machine and start recording with it and see how it works well we'll make sure you can take it away <gasps> apparently there's two colors as well there's a yellow one and a silver one you'd go for the silver one i'd right? go for the silver yeah yeah i like that i'm, I'm a traditionalist a traditionalist yeah <laughs> you'd be sneering it's like the guys turning at the jam night with a prs and they got it in the case he's got a yellow one yeah. uh, <laughs> That's great. I hope that's been of some use to hear it. And also, just know we sell these. 
You know, we're the only guy, I think we're the main head honchos in England for buying this stuff now. So thanks to Behringer for letting us get our hands on it. And yeah, check out you. the thank other you. videos yeah. of the audio only if you don't like us talking. And uh, I'm sure we'll have more of Dom in here because we've got exciting things coming from Behringer almost every, well, whenever Uli decides for us to have them, Brilliant. we are very happy to have them because he's excited. killing it at the moment, Uli. Thank you, brother. One day I want to interview Uli. Interesting character. Well, I've never seen him. I want to talk to you. This is an open invitation. It would be a dream. I'll fly anywhere in the world. There you go. And Taylor will come as there well. There you go. I, preferably, I imagine meeting Uli on an island and he's like on top of a, a volcano. Yeah, yeah, with, with loads of analog synthesizers. Yeah, with analog synthesizers. <laughs> like, oh. And he's just like, actually, turns out to be the nicest dude ever. I think he will be. He's, 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 he's very smart. He's got his finger on the pulse, obviously. Because every, everything that, that all these other firms missed, that they missed a trick. And he just went, right. And he's enabling people it's with wonderful. less money. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. You were it's saying wonderful. that when he's you were at college, right, what, what would you have done for this? Well, oh, yeah, I, I would have gone out and, and killed people for it. <laughs> yeah. Quite happily. Yeah. Quite happily. Wouldn't have batted an eyelid. Um, and it's so, full, it's, it's crazy. So this, check out the links. The, 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 so... I paid £1,600 for the old version of this and that in 2000. There we go. And, yeah. No, or did I? And if you want yeah, to buy it... Yeah, I paid £1,500 for the two of them back then. Yeah. And I sold my 303. I think I'm getting the wrong... I might have to... I sold my 303 for 1600 this year. Ooh. Yeah. And yeah. I was going to say that what's cool is with us, if you want to try this stuff out, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee. There you go. So you can buy it, and if you think, hang on, it's not for me, just send it back. No stress. I don't think there'll be many of them. There's, no, at that there. price, they're probably just going to hang around anyway. Yeah, well, you know, Fat Boy Slim said everybody needs a 303. Norman, thank you for playing us out, mate. He was right. I love a low price sandwich. I love Subway.